I'm very honored and I'm also very amazed by the harmony of this meeting. A harmony that I suppose none of us could have planned in advance, but uh, it's just uh, happened to be. Uh, I will start uh, reading a small text that I prepared for us today. And also uh, I would like to notice briefly that uh, we will speak about Jesus as uh, very usual in the Spiritist meeting. But uh, as Spiritism shows us, we could also as well speak about Buddha or Socrates or many other spiritual masters which uh, has as much to tell us and uh, as much to teach us about our inner self. So, um, it is not uh, without reason that modernity depicted religion in depreciative colors of an obscurantist stereotype. Times enough, religion represented dogma, intolerance, prejudice, and division. But if we move outside from the followers to the real masters, it becomes clear that no spiritual leader fails to be an admirable human being. This is very true for Jesus, who was so ahead of his time and contrary to the traditions of his own religion, that could hardly avoid committing heresy on a frequent basis. <coughs> the heresies he committed against the dogmas of the Pharisean times, however, were all signs of progressive and liberal thought. We can uh, briefly consider uh, how many times Jesus spoke to women who uh, he, he was not supposed to, to talk to uh, when unaccompanied uh, by her, her parents or, or husband. How many times he refused uh, washing his hands uh, before uh, having uh, meals or worked on uh, Saturdays. Uh, this may seem uh, irrelevant uh, deeds for us, but they were sins for the Jews, especially the Jews of that time. The, the Pharisaism of that time was particularly concerned uh, in the perfection of uh, the performance of uh, the, the old law. Uh, spiritism on its turn was born after one of such waves of light that set humanity free from former self-imposed chains, the Enlightenment. And I will briefly talk about that too. Uh, spiritism, therefore, is entirely liberal and does not negotiate liberty of thought, belief and expression. Everything must be questioned and analyzed without constraint. And so the scripture. Blind and literal interpretation are not only discouraged by spiritism, they are strongly rejected as aggressions to reason and ammunition to materialism, which is rather right in ridiculing such naive views. In matters of personal behavior and intimacy, every human being has the right to judge everything according to, to his or her own consciousness, and this includes gender issues and sexual behavior. Spiritism, then, does not give us insight about our sexual behavior and does not judge our inclinations, orientation, and nature, focusing only on the moral part of our lives. Everything is permitted, but not everything is beneficial. So, instead of asking if Spiritism approves or allows something, we should always ask how do we keep the best possible intention in our behavior, making it moral. So, we could now uh, pass directly to the, the image when Jesus spoke to the Samaritan at the wheel, uh, and he not only performed some amazing marvelous or, or uh, miracles, uh, uh, parapsychological phenomena, but uh, he was also very bold, very daring in confronting culture of his times and the religious law of his times by just <coughs> speaking to this uh, 
lonely woman. Um, spiritism, on the other hand, uh, was born in, in Europe uh, in a very advanced time, much uh, distant from uh, the birth of Judaism or uh, Christianity. Uh, and it was a particular moment when uh, humanity started m making the, the really hard questions about the nature of religions, and uh, including the cultural nature of uh, religions. I just read a, a book from uh, an amazing uh, Oxford historian on, on the history of religion and the history of the church, uh, McCulloch, uh, who in one of his uh, books on uh, reformation compared uh, slavery to homosexuality. And he says something more or less like this. Uh, in the past, uh, slavery was accepted by many Christians, maybe by the majority of, of Christians, based on some uh, quotes from the Bible, which not explicitly uh, uh, promoted slavery or allowed slavery, but uh, recognized that it was the natural way of being, the natural way of uh, sustaining uh, economy. Only much more recently, in the middle of the 19th century or in the beginning of the 19th century, we started questioning this in a very profound way and using the spirit of Christianity, this free uh, inquiring spirit of uh, uh, a more moral uh, approach, which really represents the spirit of, of, of Christianity, to judge the case of slavery. And then humanity concluded that it had to move forward from uh, support or acceptance of uh, slavery to its uh, ultimate rejection. Uh, in case of uh, in, in the case of uh, sexual behavior and sexual nature, it is our time to move forward from previous prejudices that may be, uh, as an excuse, supported by uh, religious views, by this very old religious views, uh, considering that uh, the Old Testament refers to Moses about 3,000 years ago, and even the New Testament, where uh, Paul, for example, also has uh, strong words against uh, homosexuality, was written actually 2,000 years ago, more or less, almost 2,000 years ago. So it is our turn to move forward from the letter to the spirit and to understand that Christianity cannot accept rejection and any form of violence, prejudice, and uh, exclusion from uh, its uh, uh, on, uh, from its own uh, inner community or, or nature. Uh, and this is uh, something that we can uh, also learn from the Enlightenment. Enlightenment uh, philosophers and spiritual leaders realize that we should not read uh, the, the scripture as a set book, but we have to interpret it. We have to understand it as an involving collective consciousness of all Christians which are free and mature and responsible for, um, uh, uh, for evolving Christianity as a, a, a dynamic and, and living system instead of just blindly following what was written many, many centuries ago. Um, yes, that's it. So here we would also uh, like to remember some forerunners of uh, feminism who happen to be also spiritualists in, in, in a great extent. Mary Wollstonecraft was a remarkable Enlightenment philosopher and Christian. She, she wrote much uh, about Christianity 
and about the importance of uh, Christian values to progressive and, and liberal uh, thoughts. And Condorcet, who was a participant of the French Revolution, was actually killed uh, by Robespierre for advocating that uh, the same rights we acknowledged or we recognized to men should also be acknowledged to women. And uh, Robespierre disagreed <coughs> with that. And just for that reason, Condorcet was uh, killed by, by the revolution, re revolutionary tribunal. Uh, then we have in, in the spirits book, the question 200. Do spirits have a gender? Not as you understand it. This is a very, maybe tricky answer. Uh, for gender depends on the corporal composition. That's the clear part. Love and sympathy exist among spirits, but are based on the similarity of sentiments. Well, we can conclude from that that uh, spirits do not have sexes and they do not have gender as we understand it. We are not sure uh, what exactly that means, but uh, we can uh, suppose that uh, this is a matter of bodily constitution. It's something that we, we inherit as uh, organic uh, structure and, and, and uh, our organic constitution. Uh, obviously, it raised the question, uh, why do so many, maybe all spirits, have some sort of gender identity after death? And uh, we can consider that uh, in our anthropological evolution, for example, living thousands and, and, and millions of, of lives as animals before living as a uh, uh, rational uh, spirits as, as human beings, we have sexes, at least in this planet. And uh, because of this very long, uh, almost immemorial conditioning, it is very likely that the gender uh, constitution is um, in, in impressed in our soul, in our psyche, in a way that uh, we can hardly avoid identifying ourselves as um, genders, as, as having a, a gender. It could be something like that, but we actually do not know. This is uh, what uh, is uh, very interesting in, in, in philosophy. We have many answers uh, without, uh, we have many questions without any answer, without proper answers. So we can only speculate on that. But anyway, we have to accept that uh, the answer of the spirits and they are until our days quite uh, uh, in accord to that, quite uh, unanimous, I would say, uh, in saying that we have actually no gender and no sexes in the spiritual life. Well, then we move to the immediate next question. Can a spirit who has animated the body of a man animate the body of a woman in a new exist existence and vice versa? And the answer, the, the short answer is yes. <laughs> the same spirit can animate both male and female bodies. And that means uh, it does happen, it is natural, and we can expect that if we have strong long-term conditionings, like attachments to one, uh, of the sexes, one, one uh, gender, it is to be expected that in some incarnations, in the other gender, we hold some features of the former conditionings of the opposite uh, gender. It's something that should not shock or, or as, uh, be, be seen as a, a worry by any species. Um, and it follows that uh, the characteristics attributed to sexes are either purely biological or cultural, uh, or in the long term they are just uh, imprinted or impregnated in, in the spirit after uh, he gets used to that. Uh, and then question 202, does the spirit when existing in the spirit world prefer 
to be incarnated as a man or a woman? This is one of the best questions because we would almost automatically say, well, I prefer to remain a man, I prefer to remain a woman, maybe, because we are so used to the material world and to, to the cultures of the material world that we may believe that for the spirits uh, there should be also a preference of uh, gender orientation. But the spirits say this matters little to the spirit. This matters little to the spirit. Although it doesn't look like it matters little to us. So this is a very tricky answer because they seem to be teaching us or telling us that it matters much for bodies or for incarnated beings and not for discarnated beings. Um, it is decided, they continue, according to the trials that they must undergo. So uh, it seems to be something that is decided, decided purely on the basis of the moral necessities of the spirit and doesn't have uh, much to do with um, with preferences and, and tastes. Well, here we can have some uh, some comments on, uh, of Kardec. It's not the the answer of the spirits, and the comments is uh, well, spirits incarnate man or woman because they have no gender, as it is necessary for them to develop themselves in every direction, all genders as with all social positions, furnish them with special trials and duties and the opportunity of acquiring experience. He who has always incarnated as a man would only have knowledge and experiences of man. So they uh, seem here to be stressing the necessity of changing position, uh, something that is absolutely clear when we analyze other uh, spiritual teachings on uh, economical classes or social classes and work positions or professions, uh, which is, the spirits uh, say, the spirits say, uh, have to to change uh, through time, so we can have this this contrast and and these different experiences, and it is very helpful for our, our growing. And here they uh, stress also that it is uh, important to us to experience female and male characteristics or male and female experiences. Um, so in, in relation to marriage, it is a very interesting part I, I, I would like to come back. I didn't take the, the, the questions and answers, but uh, it's 695 and, and 6 and the spirits just uh, stress and, and focus the answer in saying that it is a progress, it's a remarkable progress. We have to briefly consider that because it may be the only relevant issue uh, in, in relation to sexuality. The only thing we have to consider uh, when treating uh, sexuality and spiritism is that we should uh, enforce monogamy and uh, marriage instead of promiscuity and uh, irresponsible um, sexual behavior. Because, uh, obviously, we have consequences of uh, children which cannot grow properly in an unstable uh, environment, in an unstable uh, uh, circumstance. And we also have consequences uh, for the relation between the, the, the two persons involved in the, in the, in the couple or in whatever other more uh, strange configuration we may imagine. Uh, in the past, thousands of years ago, marriage obviously did not uh, exist. It was in existence. Uh, so we had uh, many sorts of... Uh, weird configurations, to, to, to repeat this, this term, uh, going from harems, the, this uh, kind of collective of, of slaves to, to sexual purposes, concubines and 
uh, fluid or flexible uh, 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 arrangements between people. And uh, we ultimately realized that they uh, lead to violence and problems uh, between anyone involved in them. So uh, without much explanation, the spirits just uh, stress that it is a progress, but if we reflect rationally on the subject, we will see that in practical terms, it is very difficult to have uh, harmony and, and happiness from uh, unstable uh, relations, especially uh, including the, the, the sexual force or sexual desire in these uh, relations which is a very, very strong uh, uh, inclination. Uh, another very key issue uh, in spiritism is equality uh, among men and women, the equality of, of rights, uh, at least, and uh, also uh, an, an underlying moral equality that uh, promotes this equality of rights. So in uh, question 817, are men and women equal in the sight of God and do they have the same rights? And the answer, uh, it, it's a very, um, well, very strong answer actually. Has not God given them both the knowledge of good and evil and the faculties to progress? Uh, we can infer that it is a yes. <laughs> And uh, the spirits may um, may be worried by the fact that uh, the consequences of the former teachings should lead to this uh, answer. Well, in 818, where does the moral inferiority of women in some countries come from? This is a very <coughs> present question, unfortunately. And they answer, from the cruel and unjust supremacy which man has exerted over them. It is a result of social institutions and of the abusive exercise of strength over weakness. So again, it is um, due to the bodily constitution. We can also uh, conclude or speculate that Today, similarly, societies that sustain prejudices based on gender orientation, for example, homophobia or transphobia, <coughs> could be also blamed by uh, being um, some sort of cruel and unjust supremacy, uh, where the majority of the traditional or more uh, recognized forms of uh, sexuality uh, exert over the uh, minorities. So, thank you very much. <laughs>